Cell shading is the technique that drives games such as Zelda Breath of the Wild, Persona 5, and Okami. It's usually characterised by simple colours and hard borders between brightly and dimly lit areas of an object. In this video, we're going to use Shadograph to build a dazzling cell shading effect in Unity URP. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to see more content like it. Before we jump into the effect, let's go over a few lighting basics. Since we can't modify Unity's automatic lighting in Shadograph directly, at least until the Adler functionality, we'll need to do it ourselves. And to do that, we need to understand exactly where the light comes from. We'll base our lighting on the Fong shading model. Ambient light is a base level of lighting caused by indirect light bouncing all over a room, and we can model this cheaply and effectively by adding a blanket lighting value to everything. Ray tracing, eat your heart out. Then there's diffuse light, which you can think of as non-shiny light, and this is based on the angle between the surface normal, N, and the light direction vector, L. The higher the angle, the less light there is. We calculate this using the dot product, so it's called N dot L. Then there's specular light, which appears on shiny surfaces as bright white highlights. It's based on the surface normal and what's called the half vector, H, which is the mean average of the view direction and the light direction. Specular lighting is just N dot H. The final part of the puzzle is Fresnel lighting. This isn't usually part of Fong shading, but it's a great addition to a cell shading effect, and it's definitely present in Breath of the Wild. When you have a bright light shining on the back of an object, you'll see light bleeding around the edges. That's what Fresnel lighting looks like. It's based only on the view and normal vectors, although as the angle increases, so does the amount of lighting. Hence, Fresnel lighting is 1 minus n dot v. The final amount of light on an object is just the sum of the ambient, diffuse, specular, and in our case, Fresnel light. Now that we know where the light should come from, let's calculate it with Shadograph. There's no built-in node in Shadograph to grab the lighting calculated automatically by Unity, so we're going to code it ourselves. Alex Lindman's fantastic article on the Unity blog site has a breakdown of how to do just that. Don't worry, it's a copy and paste job if you're not a coder. I'm starting with an unlit graph, and I'll add a custom function node which will let us inject our own code into Shadograph. I've created a file called lighting.hlsl, and we're going to get information about the scene's directional light by writing a function called mainlight underscore float. It takes in the world position, and then we use the transform world to shadow chord and get main light functions, which exist in Unity Shader Code API, to access the directional light and output the direction, colour, and attenuation of the light. Attenuation gets lower if the pixel should be in shadow. Then we need to set a few defaults which get used in the shader graph window since no light actually exists there. To use that code, just set the source file on the custom function node to lighting.hlsl and type main light into the name field. Ignore the underscore float bit, we need to add that in the code so Unity knows the precision of the variables. I like to separate custom functions like this into their own shader graph, and in this case, I'll name it get main light and multiply the two attenuation values together. Make sure the inputs and outputs line up to those required by the custom code. But that's just the main light. What about the other lights in the scene? We'll need another function called additional light, which is very similar to main light, except it'll take an index parameter to get a specific light shining on an object. We'll set some default values beforehand, then check if the index is less than the number of lights acting on the object. This time, the default values are used if our index is invalid. The getAditionalLight function is provided for us to get data from the light. I do the same thing with the additional lights and make a subgraph called getAditionalLight to wrap the whole thing up. Now we've got the shader code out of the way, it's time to calculate some lighting inside ShaderGraph. 
Now that we actually have some lighting information, Unity gives us all the other parts to do the lighting calculations, so let's start with the diffuse light. We'll pass the world position into a get main light node, that's the custom node we just wrote, and take the dot product of its direction output with a normal vector, which returns a value between minus one and one, where one is where the light shines directly onto the surface, zero is on the lip between lit and not lit, and minus one is where the light shines in the complete opposite direction to the surface normal. Multiply by the attenuation, and then the light colour, and let's just leave it there for now. We're going to use the value just after attenuation, but before applying the light colour, in some future calculations. For the specular light, it's a similar story. We'll calculate the half vector by adding the light direction and view vector, then normalising, and then we'll take the dot product between that and the surface normal to get the specular lighting amount. Since specular light is based on the smoothness of an object, we will add that as a property and raise the specular value to the power of the smoothness. Make sure you use a saturate node beforehand to bound between 0 and 1, because negatives will throw off the power calculation. Multiply by the attenuation and light colour, and then the diffuse value because specular highlights can't appear where diffuse light isn't present. Finally, there's the Fresnel lighting. Unity helpfully provides a Fresnel effect node which does the calculation for us. Thanks, Shadograph! We'll add a property called Fresnel size, and then take the reciprocal of it to use that in the power input, but since the Fresnel appears smaller with larger inputs. Yet again, multiply by the diffuse lighting value because Fresnel shouldn't appear where diffuse light is absent. If we temporarily added these three sources of light together and output them to the base colour on the master sack, we will start to see some good lighting on our objects, even if we haven't included ambient light. Play around with the properties to see what happens. Smoothness can go into the thousands for good results, and Fresnel size is usually very small, like between 0.05 and 0.1. Obviously this isn't cell shading yet. To do that, we're going to have to add a lighting cutoff of some kind. There's several ways to do the characteristic cell shading cutoff. In the original article I wrote on this subject, I used a texture ramp which encoded lighting amounts in a texture strip, which makes it easier to customise the lighting with a few minor downsides, but this time I'll just use Shadograph to add a single cut. We'll start, yet again, with diffuse light. We could use a step function to cut the light where diffuse equals zero, and that would give us a hard border between light and dark. But instead, I'll use smooth step, which gives us a tiny amount of fall off between black and white, so the transition isn't quite as harsh. I'll use a lighting cutoff property to set where the threshold should be, and then a fall off amount of about 0.05 for the smooth transition. For the smooth step node, the lighting cutoff should be edge 1, and lighting cutoff plus fall off amount should be in edge 2 then stick the diffuse light into in. Now we've got some cell shaded light. At this point we should think about how we want ambient light to function. Usually we would add ambient light as a blanket value at the end like I mentioned, but this might have the effect of brightening the entire object more than we want and make it difficult to decide which colours to use. Instead, we're going to use the ambient light to modify the diffuse colour value by remapping the output from smooth step. We'll do that by taking the maximum between it and a new property called ambient strength. In essence, we're raising the floor of the darkest areas by some amount. Multiply by diffuse colour, which is another property to finish off the diffuse light. The specular and Fresnel light are a similar story, without taking ambient light into account. For each, take the calculation so far and use the same smooth step setup, then multiply by specular colour and Fresnel colour respectively, which are two new properties. Since lighting is additive according to the lighting model we graciously adapted from Fong, we can take these three strands of light and add them together as part of the final lighting calculation. Now if we take a look at our example scene, our objects look fantastic with cell shading applied. Again, I'd encourage you to try different colours and models from all angles to see what looks best to you. If we introduce a couple of extra lights though, there's no effect on the objects because we're only taking the directional light into account. 
We already wrote code to get information about additional lights, so let's put together the rest in Shader Graph. As we've said, lighting is additive, so we can add the diffuse and specular influence of other lights onto the influence from the main light. It'll look really messy if we just throw everything onto the same graph, so I'm going to abstract the additional light calculations into two subgraphs called calc additional diffuse and calc additional specular. Let's look at calc additional diffuse. Shader Graph can't use loops unfortunately, so I'm going to recreate the nodes to calculate the diffuse light for the first additional light, then copy the group three times and change the light ID on the get additional light custom node that we made early on in the tutorial. I think we can support up to eight lights, but I'll stick with four for now. Then we add the four values at the end and output a vector three called diffuse, which we can set in the node settings of the output node. The calc additional specular subgraph is similar, except we need a smoothness input for the power calculation. Otherwise, I use the same system of copying out the code into four rows. We do the n.h calculation like we did for the main light specular, then we also need to multiply by the individual light's n.l calculation to make sure the highlights only appear in the right place. Don't worry if there's fewer than four additional lights acting on some object. The default values in our custom code will make it so that those lights add zero to the final light amount. I've copied our main graph into a second version called cell shading additional, so you'll be able to use both versions. The amount of tweaking required is minimal. For the diffuse light, take the multiply just before smooth step and instead saturate it, then add calc additional diffuse to it. The value output by saturate needs to be used in the specular calculation, and the value after adding both together is used for the Fresnel calculation and for the diffuse smooth step. As for the specular light group, the tweak is similar. Just before multiplying by the diffuse light, add everything up until that point to calc additional specular, making sure you plug in smoothness into its input. If you hop into the scene view and add a couple of lights, you'll now see your objects react to it. There's even more than one specular highlight so your objects will twinkle in the light. Obviously, there's loads of features you could add to this. Originally, this tutorial was only going to cover diffuse colour, but I quickly added the ability to read a texture by multiplying it with the diffuse colour, and I'm very glad I did, because it makes this model of Link look amazing. And there's limited support for other PBR maps like normals, ambient occlusion, or emission, so if you want the shader to really shine, Try to add some of those yourself. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Your names should be sparkling on screen right now. If you want to support the channel, then even just following my posts on Patreon is super helpful, or you can throw me a one-time donation on Ko-fi. I'll be back soon with new content, and maybe this time I won't even be ripping off The Legend of Zelda. Until next time, have fun making shaders.